السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته معكم دكتور صباح عبد الرسول الحمودي أخصائي جراحة الوجه والفكين حاصل على شهادة البورد في جراحة الوجه والفكين وتدريسي في كلية طب الأسنان محاضرتنا اليوم موجهة لطلبة المرحلة الخامسة في موضوع جراحة الفم موضوع المحاضرة هو مجلري فاكتورز The objective of this lecture is to understand the basic principles in the diagnosis and management of the maxillary fractures. The lecture will be outlined in the following anatomical landmarks, clinical examination, imaging techniques, treatment, and complications of the maxillary fractures. Maxilla is the central bone of the midface, composed of the four processes zygomatic process. Frontal process, follicular process, and the palatine process. Contain also the infraorbital foramen for the passage of the infraorbital vessels and nerves. Classifications of the maxillary fractures. Rene, which is a French surgeon, classifies the maxillary fracture into three types: E41, E42, E43. What is the Lefort 1 fracture? Lefort 1 fracture. The fracture line extends through the lower half of the nasal septum and to the lateral piriform rim. Then the fracture line extends laterally above the teeth disease, crossing below the zygomatic maxillary rejections, and traverse the trigo maxillary rejections to interrupt the lower third of the trichoid plates. Figure showing the leaf for to one fracture. What are the clinical features, signs and symptoms of the leaf for to one fracture? Slight swelling of the upper lip, ecchymosis, which is seen in the buccal sulcus and below the zygomatic arch, blurring signs, which is an ecchymosis at the site of the greater palatine foramina bilateral, mal occlusions which is seen as an anterior open part and posterior galling of the occlusion which may cause obstruction of the airway. Gorin signs which is a bilateral hemoxis of the greater palatine foramen. Bilateral fractures may occur associated with the maxillary fractures. The most common bilateral fracture is the mid-bilateral sagittal fracture. Due to the impactions of the maxillary teeth against the maxillary against the mandibular counterpart, fracture of the cusp of the individual, individual maxillary teeth is seen, mostly seen in the premolar region. Percussions of the maxillary teeth results in distinctive crack or sound, which is similar to the sound produced when the china pot is stuffed with a spoon. The teeth and the maxilla will move, but the upper face and nose will stay fixed. Sometimes, the lateral fracture may be associated with the default one fracture. There is no tenderness of our or other organizations and the immobility of the icomotive arch and one. The default two are called pyramidal fractures. The default two fracture starts from the nasal bridge at or below the frontal nasal suture through the frontal process of the maxilla and extend inferior laterally through the lacrimal bones and medial orbital wall along the ultraorbital margin rim through or near the inferior orbital foramina and then extend inferiorly through the anterior wall of the maxillary sinus below the zygomatic body, then traverse the trigomaxillary rejection and cause a fracture and by causing fracture of the lower third of the trigoid plate. What are the clinical features of the leaf for two fractures? The most common features are the gross edema of the middle third of the face give the appearance of the moon face to the patients. 
by uh, by lateral circumorbital edema and ecchymosis giving the appearance of the raccoon eye as seen in this figure. Bilateral subconjunctival hemorrhage, which is mostly seen in the medial half of the sclera. This phase deformity and lengthening of the phase is due to the separations of the middle pair from the skull base. Pseudo telecompass increase the distance between the medial compass is due to the swelling of the nasal bridge, giving the illusions of the true telecompass. But true telecompass is uh, involved in the nasal orbital modal complex pressure, not in the mid-portal. Diplopia may be seen in the case of orbital pleural fracture. Pupils usually are at level unless there is a gross unilateral in a pangos. When maxillary teeth are grasped, the mid-facial skeleton moves as a pyramid, and the movement can be detected at the infraorbital margin and nasal bridge. CSF rhinorrhea may be present due to the tearing of the mental hair of the brain. Step deformity at the infraorbital rims or nasofrontal rejection is noticed. Anesthesia and or paresthesia of the cheek is noted due to the damage or injury to the infraorbital hair. Epiphora is, is the tearing of the eye due to the interruption of the nasolacrimal duct in case of the leaf or two fraction. In ophthalmos, it is a posterior position of the eye globe due to the increase of the intraorbital volume, which is occurring in case of the orbital lower fractures. Telecompass patient to this figure showing the patient to with the lip for two fracture, not the telecompass and the face lengthening either in addition to the CVD compass. The LIFO2, other clinical features which may be seen in the LIFO2 are the malocclusions. Most common abnormality is the open pie deformity. In addition to this phase deformity from below to the front, as seen in this figure. B43 fractures. The fracture line stained from the knees of frontal suture along the medial wall of the orbit through the superior orbital fissure. Then the fracture line stained along the inferior orbital fissure and the lateral orbital wall to the frontozygomatic suture. The zygomaticotemporal temporal suture is also separated at the zygomatic arch. The fracture line that extends along the sphenoid bone causing fracture of the lower pair of the three gold plates. This figure showing the report three. What are the clinical features of the report three? Mobility of the whole facial skeleton as a single block can be filled. Gross edema of the face, bilateral septum orbital ecchymosis, and gross edema giving to the face the raccoon eye appearance, in addition to the bilateral subconjunctiva march. Tenderness and separations of the bones at the frontozygomatic sutures. Characteristic this face deformity with lengthening of the face. Hooding of the eyes, tosses, may be seen due to the separations of the frontal zygomatic suture. When lateral displacement has taken place, tilting of the occlusal plane and dragging on one side is seen. Other clinical features of the lip 43 deformity of the zygomatic arms, disorganizations, and lengthening of the nasal skeleton, if stasis. The bleeding from the nose and CSA primary may be seen. Depressions of the ocular levels, which is called hypoglobus. 
difficulty in opening the mouth and the ability to move the lower jaw. This figure showing the patient with ptosis holding of the eye is occurring to the dropping of the upper lid, which is resulted from the separation of the frontoesangiomatic suture during the default refraction. After examination, the patient should be sent for the imaging. The first time, imaging techniques for delineate the fracture line, the maxillary fracture, is the computerized tomography, CT scan, using axial and coronal view. This figure showing the CT scan, axial and coronal view, in case of the maxillary fracture. Showing the U42 and U41. Also, this figure showing the U43 on the right side and U42 on both sides. Coronal section. CT scan three dimensional can be used to eliminate the extent of the maxillary fractures and also in case of the plantation fractures. If the computerized tomography is unavailable, plain radiograph is the alternative. The most, the first choice of plain radiograph is used in the axillary fracture is the water's view, which is an occipital mental view, 30 degree. Because this view, it is good, excellent view of the maxilla, maxilla sinus, zygoma, zygomatic parts, rims of the orbits, especially the floor of the orbit, and nasal bone. Now, we are talking about the surgical treatment planning for the maxillary fracture. The first treatment on a patient to the maxillary fracture is to resuscitate the patients. After the patient to stability, reduction and fixations of the facial fracture is performed. The timing of treatment of the maxillary fractures. The optimal time for the treatment of the, of, of the maxillary fracture is about uh, two to eight days post the fracture because it is the optimal time to allow for the improvement in the medical condition of the patient, careful clinical assessment and the planning, reduction of the soft tissue element and easier manipulations of the bone. Before that, the aim of the treatment is to resuscitate the patient to stabilize the medical condition of the patient. Emergency treatment as the aim of the emergency treatment is to maintain the airway, infarctal histamine, stabilizer, mobile fractures, arrest the hemorrhage and transfers of blood if necessary, and monitoring of the vital signs. Within 24 hours after fracture, the treatment consists of the repair of the deep lacerations, impressions of the teeth, possible but treats the less severe maxillary fractures with no other major injuries. The reduction of the maxillary fracture. If the, if the fragment of the maxillary fracture is loosely mobile, can be reduced and returned to its original position by the finger manipulation. If the maxillary frag uh, fragment is impacted, we use forceps called the Rowe-Williams Ro forceps. Rowe-Williams forces consist of the two plates, the flat plate inserted along the nasal floor, while curved plate inserted along the palate. The surgeon stands behind the patient and he grabs over the two handle of the Rowe-Williams forceps, and then rotational movement to, to move the fragment to, and with anterior traction to remove the fragment to its original position. If the maxillary fragment is firmly impacted, 
This is the require fracture line should be exposed and mobilized using the osteotome. Then applications of the raw disimpaction forceps for the disimpaction of the fracture. Figure showing the raw disimpaction forceps and the alternative instrument which is called Hayton Williams forceps. Displaced fracture may require disimpaction before placement and the intermaxillary fixations. For raw disimpaction forceps, use rocking motion with constant anterior attractions to disimpact to the fracture as seen in these figures. Alternative to the raw disimpaction forceps is the Hayton Williams forceps which is used in case of the palatal siblet fractures. The two halves of the palate are grasped and approximated by fractions applied by the head of Williams forceps. Then the maxillary fracture is disimpacted or reused by using raw disimpaction forceps. Reduction of the lip for two. Disimpaction is carried out in a similar manner as in the lip fort one fractures using the raw disimpaction forceps. But extreme care should be taken because this fracture usually they involve the skull phase. Reductions of the lip fort three fracture. In the case of the lip fort three fracture usually occur in association with other fractures of the facial skeleton like the orbital or nasoorbital ethmoidal fractures. It should be reduced in the similar manner as in the type 1 lipoid 1 fractures. The sequence of treatments in case of the pan facial fractures, which is a fracture to involve of the upper or lower or middle third of the facial skeleton, using the following sequence, which is called top down or outside in approach. Firstly, the patient medical condition should be stabilized and the airways paid into. Consider the need for the tracheostomy. After the patient stabilization, the sequence of treatment of pan facial fracture include the following. First, repair of the frontal sinus fracture. Then, repair of the bilateral zygomatico maxillary complex fracture. Then, repair of the nasoorbital ethmoidal fracture. Then, repair of the lip fort fracture, including the mid palatal segment. Then, application apply of the intermaxillary fixation, then repair of the bilateral subcondyle fracture, repair and lastly repair of the maxillary fracture, first synthesial area, body famous. After reduction, the bone should be held in positions with the fair up with the fair appliance. This is called the fixations. Methods of the fixations of the maxillary fracture can be divided into two types internal skeletal fixations or external skeletal fixation. External skeletal fixation is a frequently used method of treatment and include cranial mandibular fixation and cranial maxillary fixation, such as the hollow frame, opsi frame, plaster of paris, fixation. Internal skeletal fixation composed of three methods. Direct osteosynthesis, which is the preferred method of fixation, <coughs> and include the fixation by using mini plate and screw, and fixation by using transposterous wires. Two, transfixation by using K wire. Three, wire suspensions, which are ancillary methods of treatment. Maybe frontal, circumcidomatic, infraorbital, periform aperture, or periolicular suspension wiring. Figure illustrating the external skeletal fixation devices. Here we see the cranial maxillary fixation. The mobile maxilla is fixed to the cranial vault by using rods and universal joints. Other examples of the cranial mandibular and cranial maxillary fixation by using boxy frame, 
Hall of Fame or Class of Paris. Internal skeletal fixation by using plates, many plates and screws is a preferred method of stabilization and fixation of the facial fractures. By using a mini plate, stabilization with L-shaped mini plates, 1.5 to 2 mm in thickness, using glue to screw screws on each side of the fracture lines, in order to avoid rotational stability. In a board. Advantage of the internal skeletal fixation by using mini plates and screw. Number one, permits the primary bone healing to increase three-dimensional mechanical and functional stability. Three, precise anatomical reduction and enhance the bone healing. Four, no need for additional fixation devices. Five, greater patient comfort. The patient too can be eat, breathe easy, function restore early. Six, intermaxillary fixation not required. And this is lead to airway maintenance and the patient too can be eat and breathe easily. Mini plate should be placed bridging the fracture line and should be placed along with the horizontal and vertical buttress of the face. In case of the bone loss, using of the titanium mesh with bone graft may be used. In case of the lip for two fracture, the mini, place, place, the mini plates should be placed around in the three sides. First, around uh, at the frontal process of the maxilla onto maxillary suture line two along the infraorbital rim three other zygomatic maxillary junctions in case of the 43 fracture the mini plates should be placed around at the following size infraorbital margin onto zygomatic suture zygomatic temporal suture and also along the sphenolateral orbital wall at the sphenoid point. What are the advantage of the fixations of the facial fractures by mini plates? Number one, stress shielding. The mini plates will prevent the physiological stress to the bone and the line bone. This is lead to the bone resorption and the, the mini plates and consequently to the mini plate loosening. Expensive mini plate may interfere with the CT scans and radiotherapy and cause scattering. Risk of the screw damaging the teeth or nearby vital structures. Infections may necessitate the removal of the plates and wound diseases. The second line of treatment of fixations of the facial, maxillary facial fracture is that using a wire suspension, considered as an ancillary method of fixation. Here the wire was used to reduce and suspend a mobile maxillary fragment below to a firm stable fragment above the fracture line by means of 0.5 mm stainless steel wire. There are five methods of the wire suspension. With frontal suspension, infraorbital suspension, circumzygomatic suspension, piriform aperture, and perallegular suspension. Right. Figure is illustrating the methods of fixations of the maxilla by using the wire suspension. Another method of internal skeletal fixations for maxillary fracture is to use a K-wire, Kirchner wire. For transfixing the maxilla, pass the wire from the zygoma to the other, palpate the bone about one inch behind and below the outer compass, and introduce the wire here. No starting rule is required. 
while introduced in this way rarely leave a scar, as shown in this figure. The maxillary sinus may be puffed with the hydroform puff. Carational wire and stain mount pin, which is used for fixations of the fracture. Here is figures showing the various shapes and size of the uh, K-wire and stain mount pin. Complications of the maxillary fracture and their treatments. Number one, infraorbital nerve paresthesia, which is caused by the injury or trauma to the infraorbital vessels and nerves. Where well, this is occur seen in case of the U42 and U43, but is rarely seen in case of the U41. Two, inophthalmos. Inophthalmos is the posterior resistance of the eye glow. It is occur due to the change in the orbital volume. Endothermals can be treated by using either surgical explorations, then using bridging of the orbital floor fracture by using the bone graft to restore the original volume of the orbit. Infections can be occurred after the maxillary fracture. Exposed hardware. Many place screw or other fixation devices may be exposed due to the infection and do require and to the, in this case it is necessary to removal. In addition, in the presence of this material, stainless steel material, many place screws and wire cause infection because they are, the body regard them as a foreign bodies. Deviated symptoms and nasal obstruction. In case of the report to or report to three, it may be associated with the obstruction of the nasal symptom due to the bleeding, the oedema, in addition to the trauma to the cartilaginous or point nasal symptoms. Altered visions. Diplopia may be occur in case of the report two or three due to an associated with the orbital floor fracture. This is a cause diplopia. The patient will be uh, suffer from the double visions during the up or down gaze or lateral or medial gaze. Then union of the fracture line. Loss or inadequate treatment of the fracture line leading due to the persistent mobility of the uh, fragments. In addition, also the union may be caused by the infection. Malunion and malocclusions. Inadequate treatment of the maxillary fractures and inappropriate restorations of the occlusal plane lead to the malocclusion. Epiphora. Epiphora, which is excessive tearing due from the eye of the patient so due to the disruption of the nasolacrimal duct. Epiphora. Foreign body reactions such as the presence of the honey foreign materials in the body such as the um, uh, screw wires scarring that results from the wounds and sinusitis due to the injury to the you know, mucous membrane that is lining the maxillary sinus thank you for your listening to and see you in the later time